While playing my first game of Warhammer 40,000, my opponent had the Battlezone Manufactorum set. I liked the modular sections of conduit and piping, but decided to create my own defence line, and in keeping with the Saving Private Ryan inspiration I have been taking, I decided to continue with that theme, and make some of these metal structures in the opening moments of the film. So I took a look into their history, and it was actually really interesting. They are apparently called Czech Hedgehogs. The name originates from the Czech Republic, where they were invented, and first used on the border to Germany. The first versions were made from concrete, and proved useless, because they could be chewed up by simple machine gun fire. But then they started to make them from metal I or L beams. They were also widely used by the Soviet Union as an anti-tank defence, running into them and they could strand a vehicle, blow them up and they just roll around and remain functional as a hazard. Like a Caltrop or a D4, no matter how they roll, they are always pointing up and effective. A single hedgehog could block an entire street, and they became a symbol of defence at all costs in the Soviet Union. In fact, the memorial to the Moscow defenders is formed from three stylized Czech hedgehogs. They also became part of the Atlantic Wall to ward against the Normandy invasion, where their intended purpose was to manifest when the Allies attacked at high tide, at which point the hedgehogs would hamper tanks and damage and maybe even pierce the hulls of the landing craft. Aware that such obstacles would be present, this helped solidify the plan to attack at low tide, because although it meant a long and hazardous approach, blatantly exposed to enemy fire, these unseen underwater traps and hazards would be avoided, which makes sense. Landing craft that fell foul of them would be unable to head back out and gather more men and vehicles for the landing, but would also just start to clog up the beach. Okay, enough history to manufacture in. First up, I tried using lollipop popsicle sticks. I measured the depth of the stick onto a second stick, cut that depth away, and glued them together to get the L shape I was after. Once dry, I sanded the rough end smooth and used an X-Acto to cut the little notches. I glued the three pieces together, but they just didn't look like the material what I was trying to replicate at scale. I tried trimming them down a little, but they just still didn't look right. I know, maybe I'll save them and try an I-beam variance another time. Ordinary cardboard, however, looked much more appropriate, but on the plus side, playing with the stick construction allowed me to play around and familiarise myself with the assembly process, so it was a good prototype learning experience. First, I cut quarter inch wide strips of cardboard to create the beams. I also cut 5 8 inch squares to be the gusset plates. I cut the strips to 2 and a half inch long sections and a pair of lollipop sticks that I was intending to use before I gave up on this material served admirably as a means to glue the beams together. I could place a lower strip in the bottom and then run a line of Elmer's glue along an edge of the second piece and then just place it down against the upright. This let everything remain in the correct position as it dried. Sometimes it just needed a little wriggle underneath with an X-Acto knife to get them free if some glue had bled through. But other than this, the method worked brilliantly to create all of my L-beams. I used offcuts to glue onto the ends and let them dry with the intention of trimming them to size later on, because I tried cutting out some tiny triangles and gluing them, but it was just way too fiddly. For the gusset plates, I used a pencil and drew a cross from corner to corner on the squares, and then cut out one of these sections, thereby creating a single triangle notch that reached out to the very middle of the plate. I used scissors and an X-Acto knife to trim and create the triangle cap at each end of the beams, and then cut triangular notches near the end for extra authenticity. Intrigued, I looked into this and discovered these are intentional because they help facilitate snagging and securing barbed wire. Hmm, if that's the reason for them, maybe I should take a go at making some barbed wire for the first time as well. Anywho, taking the gusset plate, I glued it in the centre of a beam. Then, I added another one at the opposing angle. 
Then I added another gusset plate to a different beam. This gave me a groove in which to place another beam. So now I had these two parts. Then I slotted it in to create a cross. This would be the stage at which the real Czech Hedgehog would be shipped to its desired location. The final third beam would accompany it and then be bolted or welded into place at the deployment site. And then dropping this final third beam into the awaiting groove. And there we have the Hedgehog in all its tank foiling glory. I applied a layer of Mod Podge with some black and white acrylic. Now, this looked a little too light, but seeing as I was going to be adding a new darker layer anyway, I decided to use this opportunity to add some flair. I don't really like talking about my flair. Okay. Once the Mod Podge was dry, I took tweezers to dab Chenkao half beads into a blob of Elmer's and drop them into place on the interior of the pyramid created by the gusset plates, just as a nice little accent. Once the beads were applied and dry, I added another layer of Mod Podge, this time much darker. Now, onto the base. I cut a 1.5 inch wide and 12 inch long piece of chipboard. I angled my blade so that the edge would be beveled and would be nice and thin, creating the illusion of the ground rising up from the tabletop. I cut out a slightly smaller strip with similar beveled edges and after a quick dry brush on the hedgehogs, I placed them on the base to see how they would look and to assess their spacing. Five hedgehogs looked perfect, so I glued them down and liberally spread Elmer's glue over the base and worked it around with a brush. I placed a plastic bag into a box to catch the excess and used a measuring cup to pour the sand I acquired from my Red Rocks Las Vegas climbing trip to coat the entire base. I added some more touches of glue to the center areas and where the join between the layers of chipboard was more obvious and applied more sand. And a final touch up for the bare patches. Once dry, I shook off the excess sand into the plastic bag and then used a big soft brush to get rid of the clinging excess particles. It wasn't 100% effective, but this is what I like about making terrain instead of buying or printing it, the accidental little perks. Turns out, I really like the way that some of the sand and dust remained in place on the hedgehogs. It gives them a nice rust or pounded by desert gales aesthetic. Now, I had actually bought a packet of Army Painter barbed wire, but decided in the end to have a go and make my own. So I snagged 30 yards of Hilby and Joe 26 gauge silver plated copper wire from my local craft store. I cut a nice length and folded it in half around my X-Acto blade handle. After inserting the other ends into my drill and tightening the chuck, I just turned it on and twirled them up before winding the finished strand around a marker pen to get that nice coiled barbed wire look. Okay, it looks just like the Army Painter professionally produced stuff. I pondered adding the actual barbs, but I think this looks much more realistic and cleaner. Plus, models will be brushing up against it, and I don't want them getting scratched. Chuffed with this result, I decided to make some much longer lengths. I looped the middle around a distant chair leg, bent the other ends over twice to give my drill something to really grab hold of, and applying light tension, twirled away. I repeated this and placed all three on a pole and gave them a quick blast of black matte primer. Not too comprehensive, I left it a little patchy so you get some small hints of the silver beneath. Now, at this point, it looked a little blank and I wanted to spruce it up a bit visually. Dead body, shreds of clothing, some gore, hmm, it's a little morbid, but maybe something to make it even more effective as a defense. Then I remembered this scene from one of my favorite movies, 13th Warrior. Stand there, I cut this pole. Keep your eye on the pole, huh? So. How you Maybe not this big, but definitely stakes aiming out in one direction. I know I've seen these things before, and not just in the 13th Warrior, and so a little delve into research, and turns out they're actually called archers' stakes. At the Battle of Nicopolis in 1396, Turkish archers took up positions behind rows of sharpened stakes, which did horrific damage to the charging French cavalry and this success may have inspired Henry V to replicate their success when he planted the stakes before his men to impale the French again at the Battle of Agincourt. 
these simple but incredibly effective defences then became a staple for English longbowmen fighting in France. Ok, now I am inspired. I drilled several lines of holes through the sand and into the chipboard at a slight angle and cut cocktail sticks in half to be defensive wooden stakes. I trimmed some of them and started slotting them in. Once happy with their appearance, I stabbed the blunt end into my packing material and this allowed me to give them all a nice base coat of Army Painter Bugbear Brown. Once it was dry, I dipped them in Elmer's and inserted them into position. A spot of Abaddon Black where the stake meets the sand and I used a little dab of water and washed it up along the length to give it a nice either sooty or probably a more rising mildew gradient. I played around placing the barbed wire and what really helped were the notches in the hedgehogs. They really do help keep it in position. Even at scale they served the purpose for which they were intended. Last touch was a few tufts of army painter vegetation. So there we have it, a barricade designed to defend against pretty much everything. We have Czech hedgehogs to impede and foil armoured or wheeled vehicles, and we have the sharpened stakes for charging cavalry, and finally we have multiple coils of barbed wire for those poor unfortunate souls slogging it in on foot. And finally, some nice images of my barricade against a battlefield landscape, which is its natural, if bleak, environment.